you in Michael's office. Michael's office? What would I be doing in Michael's office? Looking for something, ransacking the place. I don't know what you're on about. Don't know what I'm on about. Have you seen him today? What is this? Am I meant to be following Michael now? Is that it? That's not an answer. I haven't seen him today, nor yesterday, nor the day before. I don't believe you. I don't care if you believe me or not. Haven't you seen Michael? No, but I'm sure he'll be in later. So why are you asking me? Because I've got my suspicions about you. I know you've done something. When Mike comes back, you're going to be in for a real shock. Are you threatening me? What's up with you two? Nothing, Max. Just a slight difference of opinion, that's all. I mean it. I want you out of here, away from Canary Wharf. I'm going to go and find Michael, and if you've done anything to him, you're going to regret ever being born. What's all that about? Oh, Annie can't find Michael, and she seems to be convinced that I'm hiding him somewhere. You? Why would you be hiding Michael? <laughs> you tell me. I haven't the faintest idea. Well, is he hiding, then? I don't know. Well, I hope he hasn't come to any harm. Why would he have come to any harm? Well, it's just... That's probably nothing, but... Somebody did threaten to kill him. Oh, really? Who? Claudia. <laughs> when? Oh, a couple of days ago. It's probably nothing. Look, she's always making silly threats. Oh, no, she would have done it all right. She's mad enough. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me if his body's not right now at the bottom of the docks. Oh, well, you don't mean that. I do. Oh. Jason? You all... Quick, get the pen. Get the pen. Barrow's pen. Okay. OK. Write down. We need to write down everything. And look, here's another one. Two children, twin brother and sister, disappeared on a hundred-yard walk from their school bus to their home in Carbondale, Illinois. Uh, well, maybe they just nipped into the bushes for a fag. After a frantic four-hour search involving much of the county, they were found at nightfall on the path between the bus stop and their front door, an area which had been searched a dozen times. It's a bit cold outside, isn't it? They told an incredible story. Incredible is right. An incredible story of being taken away by a bright light to a country made entirely of video games where playful robots enthralled them with party games and magic tricks. They thought the bright light was an aeroplane. They were five years old. How can five-year-olds make that up? Jenny, five-year-olds live in a fantasy world. Yeah, they all tell substantially the same story. Now, how can that be? Maybe they read the same comics. I shouldn't discuss this with you. You know, you just don't want to learn. Well, maybe we shouldn't discuss it out here. Can't we go somewhere warm, like the canteen? Oh, Matthew, I like it here. I told you. You like it here because you can see the seasons change, but it's winter now. There won't be another change till spring, and I'm cold. Can we go in? You just don't care. Jenny, I would squat naked on an iceberg to hear the sound of your beautiful voice. It makes me go all quivery inside. <laughs> Does it really make you go all quivery? Yes, it was just another vain, doomed appeal to reason, that's all. OK, OK, let's go in. In? Where it's warm, you mean? You're a cold-blooded creature, that's your problem. Maybe you will get kidnapped by aliens on the way. <laughs> well, Ryan. Betty, what is it? What do they say? He's finished. Three score, six and ten unquiet souls, homeward bound by the pole star, three days to the whopping shore. It's the Bosphorus, isn't it? Yes. I suspect it's our old friend, Captain Van Dorn. And they're coming here? Perhaps. Oh, well, it must be. Three days, homeward bound, whopping shore. They must be coming back here where they started. Maybe. Jason, what do you think? What do I think? Mm. I think you're a jerk, mate. Jason! What the hell's wrong with him? <clears throat> I don't think anything's wrong. 
He just figured something out, that's all. He's a lot sharper than we give him credit for. You know, there are all sorts of theories about the disappearance of people on ships at sea. Jenny, aren't you supposed to be researching your personal experiences of the paranormal? As far as I can tell, a ghost has moved your toothbrush. When's the last time you disappeared from a ship? Matthew, it's important to understand. Besides, it's all so fascinating, I just can't stop. Say that again. You know, you'd share my interests if you were any sort of a boyfriend. You'd share my disinterest if you were any sort of a girlfriend. Yes, well, I haven't decided if I am your girlfriend yet or not. Tell me more about the boats. <laughs> well, the theories with the ships like the Bosphorus and the Mary Celeste mm -hmm. is that when aliens come, they first look at the sea, because it covers four-fifths of the Earth, yeah? Right. And they home in on anything that sticks out like a sore thumb. Yes, and? And ships do stick out, I mean. Great. Are you my girlfriend now? Listen, there are yachtsmen who have been kidnapped, and they think they've lived on faraway planets for 20 years or so, and then they just... Suddenly reappear on the same boat at the instant they were kidnapped. Yes, and, and they keep the secrets for years. In case people put them in asylum. Yep, lock them up in asylums. Matthew, have you read the book? I've had it parroted to me. In the most beautiful tones, honestly. I'm going on a bit, aren't I? No, no, not at all. Liar. Jason, how are you? What do you care? That sounds fair. I care a lot. No, you don't. I you do. don't care for town. I do. Where were you last night? Oh, I was um, working late. I'm sorry about that. Oh, yeah, working late. So what's the level of job satisfaction with Ryan? Ryan and I have a professional relationship. It's not like you to be jealous. Don't give me that. Not even your favourite blue-eyed boy from Bondi would believe that one. I've been one step ahead of you all the way, so don't try to make a fool of me. Tell me. When did you first sleep with Ryan? When did Ryan first take I was only with you because I couldn't find anyone else better at the time. Let's face it. You were more than I. Where's Andrea? Listen, young lady, you better answer me, not because I'm your father, but because I'm your employer and I need to know. Now, where's Andrea? She's gone out. Where to? I said, where's she gone? Listen, young lady, I'll give you one last chance to answer me. Why should I answer you? You may be my father and you may be my employer, but you're also a traitor. You destroyed all our dreams by giving them away. Who's a traitor? You are. Now, you just get your mind straightened out, young lady. You just work out for yourself who the traitors really are. Who was it who sat here plotting and conspiring to get hold of the company that wasn't rightfully theirs? Who was devious and deceitful in order to get their greedy hands onto somebody else's money? Hmm? What did loyalty count for when it was the big buck? And see it in that light. Who was the only person on the staff who wasn't? a traitor when the crunch came. I may not be proud of what I did, Jenny, but I think I can hold my head up higher than most around here. So before you go calling people a traitor, you just open your eyes and don't be so damn smug. And he said he didn't care. He never liked me anyway. And the only reason he stayed with me is because he couldn't be bothered to find someone else. 
I wonder how he found out about us. Well, what does it matter? I think we all underestimate Jason. He's a lot sharper than we give him credit for. Perhaps that's why Van Dorn chose to communicate with him. Perhaps. Either way, we must take care not to alienate Jason. We already have. Then we must work to retrieve the situation. Otherwise, we run the risk of losing our only contact with another dimension. And then who knows what could happen. You're going to miss him, aren't you? No. No, not at all. I didn't care for him any more than he cared for me. <laughs> What's the matter? What's wrong? Nothing. Matthew, what do you think loyalty means? Loyalty? Uh, oh, um, being true and, and trustworthy. Um, doing things you said you would do, but out of respect, I suppose. Why? Nothing. And what do you think a traitor is? Um, someone who, who let you down, who, who was loyal but isn't anymore. <laughs> Why all these questions? I was just thinking about loyalty to Michael. That's a strange thing to think about. Yeah, forget it. My mind's wandering. Where is he? He's out. Out? Out where? Come on, Annie. I know you're lying. And you. You're supposed to be in charge. But I suspect you still can't lie to save your life. Is Michael here? Oh, just as I thought. Do you know there's a rumor going around the city? It says Belgrave Holdings is in debt. So much in debt it can't get out. The rumor also says that Michael Smale has done a bunk that he looked at the losses Charles was making on futures trading and he's lost his bottle. Even now he's sitting on a beach in the Cayman Islands having swiped a few millions from the safe, leaving you to go down in the ship. Right, where are you going? I'm going to do what I should have done weeks ago. I'm going to sort this mess out. Don't you start trying to take over the company, Andrew. It's not yours to take. Oh, and whose is it? Is it yours? Is it Michael sitting on a beach in the Cayman Islands? No, I'll tell you what it is. It's every man for himself. Or well, in this case, every woman. If she takes the television company, then our whole company will go down. Come on. Right, everybody. Listen up. There's been some new developments. We're going to have to bring our plans forward. Michael Smale has disappeared. Nobody knows where, but we think he's vanished due to some pressing debts. So, we are now going to take over the company and work for ourselves. Right, Jenny. Make sure the studio's booked. And is the equipment ready? Yeah, it's all fixed in. The rest we can carry. Good. Max, I want you to get the technical staff together. I want this floor deserted in an hour. Right, well, come on. Let's go. Chop, chop. Everybody, stop. You're all staying here. The show isn't moving. You're all staying here to do the jobs that you are contracted to do. Contracted? Contracted to whom? Charles Belgrave. He's dead. Michael, he's disappeared. Oh, no. We're under no obligation to anybody. You're under obligation to me. Oh, I think you're getting ideas above your station. You might be Michael's floozy, but you're just a jumped-up little camera technician, as far as I'm concerned. Right, come on, everybody. Let's go. If anybody moves, you'll be fired. I'm the vice president of this company, and I'm also Michael Smale's wife. What? what? So in his absence, I'm in charge. <laughs> 